there was one night I expected a thousand people and I'm not even kidding you. There was five people in the room. Five people showed up to this event and I was like heartbroken, devastated. But there was only five people that saw how bad that party was. When you come from nothing, I don't think you know what you want, but you know what you don't want. When you're raised a certain way, you know you want to get out of that way. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know how I was going to get there, but I knew the type of life I wanted. I knew I wanted to travel the world. I knew I wanted to be successful in my own terms. I literally gave myself a year timeline and it doesn't work. That's okay. I'll go yeah. back to school. But if I give this up and keep doing school, this might not ever come again. It's kind of wild to me that I'm in this type of industry and that I've climbed my way up to owning one of the largest festivals in our province and the largest electronic festival in central Canada. What's driving me is kind of consistently and constantly putting on the craziest events as well as loving who I'm working with and who I'm doing it for and I love Winnipeg. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Two for Rise podcast, aka the number one podcast in Winnipeg, where we document the rise of stardom of Winnipeg's talent and personalities. If you guys don't know, we're trying to beat our city and subscribers. So if you find any value from this episode, please hit the subscribe button. Let's, let's go. Let's bring on our guest for today. This man is behind some of the biggest events in Winnipeg. He's a part owner of Summer of Sound and so much more. We had him on at Summer of Sound, but we only got to scratch the surface. So please welcome Quinn Baskin. Quinn Baskin, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. This I'm man. excited to be back. <laughs> <laughs> for, a prop, for a proper proper, time. A proper yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. We, we had you d sit down for maybe like seven minutes because yeah. you were going back to back to back. Yeah, I uh, liked it, though. It was, <laughs> <laughs> cool. Let's talk about the that day. Let's start from yeah. there. Yeah, man. Because sure. That's what how was, we met. Yeah. That's how we. That was yeah. the first time we yeah, met I think you. It was our first time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I knew about you guys for a while, and I was excited to have you guys down when Stephen kind of brought it up to us. Uh -huh. We were all into it, but I've been watching all your guys' stuff, so it was cool. Love, yeah, that's, that's love, bro. <laughs> what What was like the after event? So we talked to Stephen before about setting up a summer of yeah. sound, um, but we also get your part as well. But after the event was done, what was that feeling like? Well, the, when the <laughs> event was done, for the most part, we all, not all of us. Half of us went and we party, yeah. <laughs> but and then uh, it's funny. One one of the owners said he wasn't going to go out and party, and he was just going to bunker down. After he ended up going, he had a broken ankle, and he was like <laughs> wheeling around all day, and he ended up going out to party. But uh, yeah, all of us kind of just uh, most of us, I would say, like all of us that are like heavily involved to, with uh, with the setting up and the pre promo and everything. We don't really party throughout the day. Uh -huh. um, so, like, I think I had maybe a couple shots towards the end of towards the end of the night. Uh -huh. But uh, throughout the day, you're, like, so busy running around and making sure this thing is, like, working properly that uh, you don't even really have time to say hi to people. Like, half, half my highs were like, hey, I'm sorry, I got to go. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, at the end, I think we were just, we were all so happy and we knew how much of a hit it was. Like, we kind of had an idea around the 5 p.m. point. And then when Alessa went on, we kind of really, like, I was looking at the crowd and I was just, like, kind of in awe. Like, this is definitely the biggest one yet. And it was kind of like a consensus of the whole group. Yeah. We smashed it, you know? Yeah, and, and, and obviously being the first first big electronic event since COVID yeah. kind of took us out to two and a half years ago or two years ago. That obviously was something that was on everybody's mind for like ever, mm -hmm. including yeah. myself. So uh, I think it went as good as we probably could have hoped. And afterwards we just celebrated together. Does that ever feel surreal to you, man? Like, I remember you running around, even like sitting down for our podcast. I was like, man, let's not bug him. Like he's busy, you know? <laughs> no, but, no, bug away. I like, I like getting bugged. But yeah, obviously the day of it's, it's, it's a bit tougher, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, surreal, I would say. There are a lot of, a lot of times where I kind of, it doesn't, not that it doesn't feel real, just it's kind of like, it's kind of wild to me that yeah. I'm in this type of industry and that I've, I've kind of climbed my way up to, owning one of the largest festivals in mm -hmm. our province and the largest electronic festival in central Canada, mm -hmm. as well as like working with people that run all of these events across Canada. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's something that I never thought I wanted to do and I never would have put myself in my shoes today, but like, I'm, I'm happy about it, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I really, I really enjoy what, uh, what I'm doing and I hope the city does as well, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm happy that I get to contribute to actually helping 
put on something for our province and specifically Winnipeg. You of know? course. <clears throat> you mentioned that climb up. What was that climb like? Where do we even start with the climb? Where mm-hmm. does the climb even start? Where's the first step of the climb start? The first step of the climb is actually ironic and, and pretty funny, actually. I was, well, way back in the day, I used to, I used to just go out, usually Whiskey Dicks, clubs like that, Union. Uh-huh. I would just go out with my friends. And then, and then I got approached kind of to help sell tickets for events because I was always out and people knew I knew, like I had a lot of friends, you know, and, and I was out with a lot of my friends all the time. Uh, I, I don't think it was necessarily like wanting me to promote, promote, just help them sell tickets. And then I actually sold tickets for an event. Uh, Dubs was here. I don't even remember what year it was, but I was like 18, 19. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Steven actually ended up having to help me get into an event because they weren't they weren't letting me in even though uh we, you were pro- even though I helped sell all these tickets for this <laughs> yeah. event and then Steven got me in and introduced me to a, a bunch of people at the who at the time were running a bunch of the electronic shows mm-hmm. and uh from there I kind of I was in let me backtrack actually I uh right out of high school I kind of didn't know what I really wanted to do mm-hmm. so I I was actually working at McDonald's for like 30, 35 hours a week um, every day when I was, uh, again, I was fresh. I was 18 right yeah. out of high school. So a lot of kids are in that position. Uh-huh. It's nothing like different than probably everyone, you yeah. know, but, uh, but I, I was just very, very lost. I remember, I really remember how, how I was feeling at the time I was 18 and my family had moved to Alberta and I was here alone. My brother included, he went to Alberta for a little bit. He's back now, but I was alone here and I was feeling like, really really lost um because i didn't i didn't really know what i wanted to do Mm -hmm. and i was more so working at mcdonald's just to work and just to get a paycheck you know what i mean so i could pay rent and pay for my necessities of living you know what i mean um and then then i said to myself this is actually where I have a tattoo on my chest and it actually says, don't dream of success, work for it. And it, it's corny a lot of the time, <laughs> specifically putting it on your chest, you know, yeah. but I tell a lot of my close friends and a lot of people that know me know why I got it. I was yeah. like 18. I was literally 18 and a half, maybe 19 at the time I was working at McDonald's. I had actually just started my first uh, semester at uni- the University of Winnipeg, still not knowing what I was going to do. I was taking a bunch of random courses at mm-hmm. the time. Yeah. And, uh, and my brother was actually in the city and I, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to get this tattoo solely because if I get this quote that says, don't dream of success, work for it on my chest. And I'm 40 years old and I haven't accomplished anything that oh, wow. not, not even accomplished anything that to society is successful, but to myself is successful, I'm going to be in deep regret, you know? So I, I got that tattoo and I guess now that's coming up on like nine, eight to nine years ago. Cause I just turned 27 and, uh, yeah, from there, I, I kind of started just getting the ball rolling. I, I went to university for a year and a half. Well, I was in university. I switched over to, uh, business and I was starting to do all my introduction to business and economic kind of courses. Mm -hmm. And then while I was in there, the promotion started. And then I thought to myself, if I'm helping all these people with these events, and I was actually making a decent amount specifically, like especially being in university at the time and like fresh to university, I was liking it because I could go out and party, make a little bit of money and kind of party for free. Mm -hmm. But then I started to think about it in a business mindset. If I'm making this amount of money, then the people that are paying me this amount of money who also are paying like 15 to 20 other people, yeah. maybe not as much, but still this type of an, of an amount. Because back in the day, it wasn't really like how it was right now. There was a lot of little promoters that worked for specific promoters. Okay. Now it's not like that. Mm-hmm. There's, there's in reality like a few guys and that's it. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, but back then... Uh, It was like that. And I was thinking that. So then I hit up Steven and I just said, I have an idea. I'd like to sit down with you if, uh, if you could give me even 15 minutes of your time. He was, he was super busy at the time. I feel like he's always super busy regardless, (laughs) but classic Steven. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) At at the time he was super, super busy. And uh, he said, yeah, come to my, it was one of the restaurants he owned back in the day. He said, come sit with me here. I'll hear you out. I didn't even know him at the time. I just kind of knew of him. I didn't. 
I didn't even really know of him. I just yeah. knew he was like the guy to okay. go to, uh-huh. you know, and he brought in all these acts, but I was very like deft tone to what the industry was. I just like to kind of party, you know what I mean? Yeah. At the yeah. time when I was, when I was 18, 19 and I didn't really know anyone that was actually in the industry. I just knew of kind, some people, yeah. you know, but everybody, I feel like at one point knew who Steven was. So yeah. I went and sat down with him. He ended up, really liking what I what I like had to say I said I wanted to start an event company called baseline events yeah. I wanted to bring in at the time I had no no care to do a weekly event or anything I just wanted to bring in artists and mm-hmm. right off the bat I was saying the biggest artist <laughs> no one like I was saying like who <laughs> probably at the time I, I don't remember exactly who but I'm thinking I was saying guys like Kanye West and Beyonce <laughs> and like Tiesto like the biggest names yeah, possible yeah, yeah. not knowing yeah, yeah. what it actually took to bring these guys you know and he would laugh he, he just laughed I remember saying that's totally unattainable <laughs> oh, no. and I think he told me to bring these small, small guys. And I was like, like the wind came out of my chest. Just like, I was like, screw this. Yeah. Um, but, uh, we ended up uh, sitting down. He helped me. He helped me kind of create a plan to start this business. And then from there, I, I did my first DJ. I brought my first DJ. He's actually like one of my good, good industry friends. Now his name's panic city. He was signed to Steve Aoki. He's from uh, California. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I brought him, he was around this time he was he was really buzzing because he had a few good remixes i brought him in to green room for good thursdays i partnered with steven for my first event it did it did pretty good i thought it was going to do better Mm -hmm. but uh it was also in the middle of winter it was like january something middle of winter (laughs) minus 30 out so i it was good. It was super fun. And I remember it made $0 mm-hmm. and I thought we were going to cake up, like make, make some money. Right. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it was just a super fun time. And it was cool that I actually got to say that I brought in this DJ. Yeah. Um, f- flash forward to now, like I brought panic city here probably at four or five times just as like a special guest on my night mm-hmm. because him and I became so close on it. Nice. But, um, after that I ended up doing a, I think I brought in a, a kid named Benesis and he was a, he was a bass DJ from Chicago and he was blowing up in the bass scene at the time. And I brought him to area mm-hmm. uh, with Canadians and it ended up doing like amazing. This event, I remember we were wow. so pumped. We actually at the, for at the time we made really good money and mm-hmm. I, we were super, super happy. And, and when I say really good money at the time, I, I yeah. thought it was like really good money for comparative event, you know to I mean? McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And comparative to, I got to meet and bring in a DJ yeah, and yeah. then I, I got to make money for it. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, so that went really good. And then Canadians actually sat down with me. One of the, uh, the GMs of Canadians uh, set up a meeting and this was just a fluke and by luck, because if I never did this event at this venue, it just wouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. And they actually offered me a Friday. And at the time, Ariel was going pretty much, it was pretty much done. It was on its way out. They were going to rebrand into a new club. Mm-hmm. But this was kind of their last last night they wanted yeah. to just make a push at sure. before rebranding and doing a full reno, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I became really close with uh, Canadians for a little bit, and I ran my first night there, and it did actually, like, really good. And I ran it with uh, one of my good friends that, who's still one of my best friends. Uh, his name's Bryce. And, um, yeah, no, it, it went really good. We we did it during summer, too, which for that venue it was super tough. Mm-hmm. And, again, we were 19 to 20 at the time, so, like, we Jeez. had no idea, no idea what we were doing. <laughs> because people – I think people also have uh, – a misguided look at at the club scene as well like to to be 19 and 20 in the club scene it's very young yeah for yeah, running an event mm-hmm. you know what i mean so most people start when they're mid-20s to like late 20s when they start throwing events uh because they have to build a network and stuff so i actually like jumped into this thing very early mm-hmm. and prematurely i would even say but i even asked steven at the time i remember before taking the area deal I asked him what he thinks I should do, and he straight up said to me, he's like, if it, if it sucks, no harm, no foul. You got to at least try this. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, he agreed. He thought it was super quick for me to jump into a weekly, but it ended up working. And I remember uh, when area was closing, they were doing like a five, I want to say five months. It might have even, it might have been like three to four month reno. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
they were changing it to a nightclub called Rain. And uh, so they made an agreement with me. We made kind of a contract that I was going to hold off my Saturday for this club to open. Okay. And uh, besides that, it was kind of f- fair game, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I did a summer. I, I was working everywhere at the time. I was helping people with their nights, kind of building my network again. I yeah. wasn't really running anything myself in the meantime of area closing and rain kind of, kind of getting up and running. Mm-hmm. Then, then coming close to it, we put a we put a big big push into it. And Canadians is like one of the biggest corporations there is. Course, so yeah, like when yeah. when you're working with them, the budget isn't necessarily ever there. Which is as a as a promoter, it's really nice, you yeah. know. Because now that I'm completely uh, out of Canadians uh, from a week to week standpoint, I really realize how much like <laughs> a budget means, you yeah. know. But at the time, I was starting off. I got basically unlimited budget with Canadians and they were, they were just like, it was, it was great, you know, for, for a young kid starting off in the industry. And, uh, I remember rain just opened or it was about to open. And, and I was going into my, like one of my semesters in university, I had already paid for it as well. It was like a week or two in actually, Mm -hmm. Or it was like right after the cutoff where you can't get refunds or something. Yeah, but, VW. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah. quick. It's pretty. Yeah, quick. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> so I don't even remember. <laughs> but uh, um, I I had a talk with Stephen and I even asked him. I was like, I'm too busy. I can't do school successfully if I'm going to continue this. Like, what do I do? Mm-hmm. Do I go to school? Do I do this? And he said, That's at the end of the day. That's up to you, no matter what. Yeah. So I can't I can't really chime in with that. Um, school is always going to be a, be safe though. He's, mm-hmm. He even said that, like, no matter what you go to school, like you'll, you'll have something to fall back on. And then I, I thought to myself for probably a week, I think I was even skipping class at that point, And I was, I, I skipped the, th- my a full week thinking, and I was thinking to myself, like, what do I do? And then I thought to myself, if I do a year of this, I literally gave myself a year timeline and it doesn't work. That's okay. I'll go yeah. back to school. But if I give this up and keep doing school, this might not ever come again. Do you know what I mean? And it is true. Like, there's small windows to making anything happen yeah. mm-hmm. uh, in specific industries. And then in other industries, it's a long 20-year grind until you finally until you finally hit. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. But, but with this, I knew, like, if, if I was to just walk out and leave while I was building my network, while I was building my, my new, like, my new promotion company, while I was trying to make a name for myself in the promotion industry – that might just go away, you know? So I, I, I committed to dropping out. My mom was really unhappy. Mm-hmm. I remember she was really unhappy. She thought I was, I th- think she called me an idiot, but um, uh, she ended up <laughs> retracting that. <laughs> but but um, I ended up dropping out, and then uh, I committed fully to running this Saturday night at Rain. I was still bringing in DJs, but more more or less like I brought in a guy named Kennedy Jones at a patio party for whiskey dicks anniversary party. I remember I teamed up with them to do like a special patio event. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kennedy Jones is just a bass DJ too from LA. These guys are all, uh, they're smaller, but Kennedy Jones was popping at one point. He was really on the, he was on the come up at one point too, playing like some big festivals. Um, but again, these, these were all like my kind of introductory type events. And, uh, Kenny Jones, by the way, great guy too. Yeah. All these guys that I that I brought in at the beginning, like I actually call them a friend because mm-hmm. they're they're just great dudes in the industry, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, Rain ended up being a failure. The Saturday night just yeah. just got killed every week by everything else in the city, um, and it just wasn't hitting. And it was just. The marketing was bad. Everything I was doing was just not working, mm-hmm. and it was just bad. And I was really – I felt like my gas tank was at E, I remember. But, again, I had just started. Mm-hmm. So, like, I didn't even realize, like, this happens all yeah, the time. Of course, yeah. And back in the – back then, it was happening a lot mm-hmm. to everybody, you know. Um, so I convinced Canadians to let me brand the night, a brand-new night, exact same – exact same venue no changing the venue i'm just gonna bring on a team 
and I'm going to brand it. And I called it Gravity Saturdays. It ended up being really good. Mm -hmm. And it was like the the university central party, you know? And that hit probably two years after, three years after Rain being open, probably a year and a bit after Gravity started. um, Canada sold the building. So they let me know and gave me like a two-month kind of Nope. Heads up, look, we're done in two months, and that was that was yeah. okay. Um, yeah, but but then back in the, that then I was like, what am I gonna do? Yeah, you know, yeah. I I have this this night that is finally hitting, and now I have to kind of figure a way to pivot. And luckily at the time, OV had it was a fairly new club at the time, and uh, they were looking for a Saturday promoter. Mm-hmm. I met with OV and the ownership there, and it seemed like a good fit. Mm -hmm. I ended up starting an event called Story Saturdays there, and that was kind of my first leap out of, like, a safety net. When you're at Canada Inns, it's more of a safety net because uh, it's they have your bag very easily. Mm. Uh, But then I kind of went on my my own, and, like, I fully – this was kind of me fully betting on myself going downtown because downtown promo back in the day, it was like South promo, which was considered Canadians and, and downtown promo. Yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, going downtown kind of meant you had to like fully, fully be on your own. You know what I mean? Uh, because if, if you have a bad night, you're losing a thousand bucks or 1500 bucks. Do you know what I mean? You're not just not making any money. You're literally losing, you're You're losing whatever. Yeah you were hoping to make Mm -hmm. that night, you know? Um, But it hit uh, Saturday night for like a year and a half, two years. It it went, it went crazy. Um, And from there kind of offers started flowing in. I ended up going to four for one on Fridays. I did wanted Fridays there for a couple of years. And that was one of my favorite nights because I worked with such great people there. And uh, it's crazy. I started that in 2018 and now it's 2022. Like, 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 um, I did, uh, I did Teos, Hua and I, Stephen and I did Therapy Fridays at Teos in the summer, and that was just like a gong show of a night. <laughs> like we were doing hundreds and hundreds every Friday at Teos, and Teos is a small venue, yeah. okay. and that was like that was fitting a lot of people. Um, there was actually a night at OV where I did the UFC after party when UFC came here, yeah. and I, I, one of the UFC fighters, Mike Perry, at the time he was like on the come up and actually like knocking people out and yeah. people like loved him in the ufc and uh he he reached out to us and, and we figured out a deal to get him to be the official like ufc after party um he ended up losing and breaking his nose oh, and no. having to go to the er and he didn't he didn't end up coming but i'm telling you like oh this night did at ov ov is a small club yeah we did 600 and something people this night like it was crazy you could not move in this place and (laughs) it was it was nuts and his manager ended up coming and like going crazy and partying like crazy and he ended up facetiming me from the hospital (laughs) saying hey man i'm sorry just like have have fun tonight i was secretly happy because we didn't have to pay him (laughs) the after party rate and it was as insane as if he was there you know yeah like um (laughs) But uh, yeah, from from ther- from therapy wanted Fridays. I did story Saturdays, and then Laroca came, and I met with them kind of on my way out of OV on Saturdays. I was still doing Fridays at four for one. Yeah, and uh, Laroca came, and and we really seemed to have a really good fit. This was in 2019, and probably actually the, the border end of 2018, I would say, maybe early 2019. Um, like maybe January, mm-hmm. we, we met. I want to say it was towards November, December of 2018, though we met. We kind of came into terms. First we met and kind of s- saw if it would be a good fit. It was, and then we kind of agreed on a deal, got the contract done, figured it out, and uh, I started there. I think my first night was mid-April 2019. And, like, this was my first, besides Teos in the summer, I don't really count that because – it was Corden in the summer, and Corden in the summer back then was just popping, you know? Okay. Um, but this was my first kind of pivot to lounge club night. Yeah. So it's a Mexican restaurant during the day, and then they kind of put on a DJ. There's still people sitting down eating when you're starting the night. Mm-hmm. It's a lot different than coming from 441, yeah. mm-hmm. where it's just a strict, strict nightclub, club. you yeah. know what I mean? Um, and, yeah, it, 
I loved LaRocca right off the bat. Like right off the bat, it was just like a, an immediate, an immediate fit. And, uh, my crowd seemed to really enjoy it. My friends love it to this day. They still love it. And that was three years ago now. <laughs> sure. Though, like a, a good part of two years was cause COVID, COVID. kind of yeah. knocked us out. So you can't really put, put that. This was 2019. So I ran it for almost a year before COVID mm-hmm. and it was, it was pop and it was sick. I, I had a really good time. I started making really good money and I, I was just, I was happy. You know, I kind of, I think this is when I started really seeing, where the industry could take you. You know what I mean? If, yeah. if, if you, if you kind of work the nights proper and your, your special events are going good. Uh, and also around the time in 2018 is when, um, around the time with four for one that I was running Fridays, uh, towards the end of OV, I got, uh, I got kind of confronted with summer sound yeah. And I was helping promote it for a year, probably a couple of years. And uh, I was really close with everyone that kind of was involved with it on a, on a, on a larger scale. Mm-hmm. And they, they kind of offered me to come in as, as part ownership. And I mowed it over, probably didn't even mow it over, to be honest. I knew <laughs> right away, like, this is what I wanted. I, no matter what, I wanted to, be, to become part of the ownership group of it. And uh, yeah, so 2018, I made the move and I became part of the ownership. Then 2019... Uh, we did it as well, and then obviously COVID took us out mm-hmm. for two years. And then, uh, yeah, I remember in March uh, 2020, we kind of closed down, and obviously that was the end of it for two years for for big events. Yeah. And then, uh, and then my weekly events were kind of on and off, but horribly on and off. Like the 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 restrictions that when they were allowing us to open specifically the first year was, it was just like, we were unable to even open as like a promotion industry. You know what I mean? Like there was not only was it not making any money at all. It was just the weirdest vibe. Like people were stuck to one table where like you couldn't be sitting with anyone that was the next table (laughs) over. So it would have to be like a table blocking another group from, from you. So it was just, it was just the weirdest vibe where it just wasn't working. So we were going to just kind of ax it until the end of COVID anyways. But then I think another wave of closing came. So we didn't even have to kind of make that mm-hmm. uh, decision. But uh, then fast forward until I guess last, last summer in August, we finally kind of got the go ahead that we were going to fully open for the first time in a year and a half. From August to November, things went really, really well. Events were going good. I run this throwback event called Ride and Solo that I started in 2018. Um, it just went viral mm-hmm. in 2018. And uh, ever since then, it's just a staple throwback event. It's it's the largest one in central Canada, Canada for sure. Yeah. I Maybe I'm crazy, but I would even go to say it's like pound for pound at the top of any throwback event in Canada. Mm-hmm. Because for... for the last four years it's it was banging out like 2018 2019 it was doing a thousand people every time every time every time and now uh and i used to switch the venues so i would go i had it the first one ever was ov and i, I i'm not even kidding you there was a thousand people in line <laughs> i've never seen a line at ov like this and uh um it was just too too big of an event to do at OV, and then we moved it to Cowboys, and and I I, I kind of moved it around for uh, for a couple times, and uh, then I kind of really realized Cowboys is where it's meant to be. Mm-hmm. I I really like everyone at Cowboys too. The GM of Cowboys and I are like good friends, and uh, we kind of made a deal now that I just have it every every Friday, every five to six, seven weeks that I'll do it on Fridays there. Um, but yeah, now, now, uh, fast forward. Cause in December we closed again ever since I want to say mid March, April, we've just been like going event after event after event. And like, I got to say being like in Winnipeg, mm-hmm. I've, this was the longest probably period of time where I stayed in Winnipeg. I didn't go on a trip. I didn't go and, and travel cause I love to travel. Mm-hmm. And I just stayed here because I think like I actually just enjoyed being here 
for this last six, seven months too, because I feel like everybody just wanted to be around people, wanted to like see their friends, wanted to uh, meet, even meet new people or, or meet people that they might've met during this pandemic. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And it was just like, I think Winnipeg as a whole right now is just like on fire. Everybody's, everybody's just enjoying life, you know? So, so it's nice. It's nice to see. Man, that's a it's a crazy. That was long. Right? That was the longest no. I've talked <laughs> forever. <laughs> no, but it's it's amazing, man, to hear your story. And it seems like, man, connections have got to got you where you are today. How would you say, like, how important are connections, and especially in the promoting and owning industry? Yeah, I think I think connections connections obviously get you. Connections help no matter yeah. what no matter what industry you're in. Mm. Like I I uh, I'm a big I'm a big big big. Uh, believer and big fan of Steven yeah. and I think uh, I think it's because of who he was to me when I was this 18 year old kid who knew in a, in the grand scheme of things who knew nobody mm-hmm. and had nothing to offer do you know what I mean yeah and I'm, I'm lucky that he he liked what he what he heard when I met with him and kind of told him kind of where I wanted to go mm-hmm. um, but in in also saying that I think it also is how you are as well as like what you put out to to not only your world but to the world in general you know what i mean nice. uh i'm not i'm not saying if you believe something's gonna work and you believe that you have this goal and, and mission and this is where you want to end up it's gonna happen but if you believe it's gonna happen over over not believing or, or thinking there's no chance then obviously believing it is gonna yeah. is gonna help you along the road you know uh-huh. what i mean yeah. but so yeah, I think connections are like very important and who you meet is very important. And I think being in, in the industry uh, that I'm in, I get to meet so many people from so many different areas of life as well as so many different like uh, roads mm-hmm. uh, in different industries and everything. So so yeah, I think uh, definitely important. But I also think like the belief and, and how, how you view yourself in whatever you're doing is also just as important, you yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, your story is very valuable, especially for uh, people who are trying to make something in Winnipeg and especially for someone who's just out of high school, right? Like, it's very relatable. One question I want to ask you is when you went to, like, Canada and when you went to Stephen, when you went to all these uh, places, why do you think those guys said yes to you? What was What did they see in you that gave them the confidence that, you know what, this kid's got something. That's actually a good question. You're going to have to ask them that. <laughs> <laughs> you got to no. get them back on. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I think one thing that I will say that I've been since I was 14, mm-hmm. and I'm only saying 14 is because I, th- I think 13, 14 is kind of the age where you kind of remember sure. yeah. everything. Yeah, course, you know, yeah. That's where you kind of start. I don't know if your brain starts developing, but that's kind of the – the age where I remember kind of most, most things passed. Beginning you know of high mean? school. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was just always hungry because I grew up with, I, I grew up in a, I grew up with a very, very loving mother, very, very great mother. My, my dad and I right now are like as close as we've ever been. We're, we're very good friends. Like we're best friends. Um, but, but I grew up like we didn't have a lot of money. Um, I lived with my mom, a single mom, and she, she worked her full-time job during the day. Then she went and served at night. Like my mom, my, my mom did like everything for my brother and I. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and she, uh, she like her, her entire, her entire life was just making sure her boys were okay, you know, yeah. and that we could play football and that, that, that we went to an okay school and, and. And like, yeah, some nights that meant that my brother and I were just alone and uh, that is what it is. But because of that, I knew the type of life, like my mom, my mom always says to me that she, she lives her life through my eyes now. And because of that, I always knew what I wanted with my life. I didn't know how I was going to get there. I didn't know what avenue I was going to take. I didn't even know how long it was going to be. And by no means do I think I'm there yet but I'm along the way, at least the life that I like to live, you know what I mean? And and what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think answering your question to like maybe what they saw in me, I think they just knew I was hungry. So I didn't know. I still don't know sometimes what I'm doing, you know what I mean? But I'll figure it out and I'll I'll find a way 
to maybe if it doesn't even work, I'll find a way to try to make it work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, so I think, I think my best attribute would be that I'm hungry because I know I've always kind of known, I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know how I was going to get there, but I knew the type of life I wanted. I knew I wanted to travel the world. I knew I wanted to be successful in my own terms. Everybody has success. It's different. It's different for everybody. Yeah. Some some want a bunch of money. Some want a bunch of life experiences. Some want a family. So to me, how I always look at it is whatever you think success is, go after it. And and nobody should judge what, what success is to you. You know yes. what I mean? But I think an attribute probably is just I'm hungry and I'm, I'm, I'm willing to learn and willing to try to always make it work, you know? Mm-hmm. Man, being at that age and, like, experiencing those things and seeing your parents struggle just to put on a better life for you is something admirable right we we go through that we i went through that personally too yeah. and and that fuels a different kind of like definition of success like for me like i don't know i think my definition of success is like man i it's to repay back all that struggle they went through you know and like did you go did you have a similar like definition of success when you were younger and seeing all that in your life first of all i respect that a lot yeah. i really do um yeah i think uh you know when i was when i was when I was younger, my brother and I both, we kind of like, we both had this kind of mindset that I don't know if, I always said I, I want to make sure my mom's taken care of always. Yeah, and and of I'm lucky, I'm lucky though that she's killing it now. She's out in Alberta and, and this single mom of two at the time now, now three because we have a younger sister. She's like just hit her stride and she hit it at such a late age after three kids mm-hmm. where she's like, she's she's just killing it out there. Yeah. Um, and she's in like a, a, a metals industry and, and it's, it's very odd to talk about, <laughs> but, <laughs> but she made she, it. Yeah. She, she's for herself. She's doing so good. And, yeah. and I know she's, she's a lot happier now in like just, just in an everyday kind of stance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I always knew like, no matter what I wanted to do things like for my mom, for example, she never took a plane anywhere outside of Canada I want to even say and like my brother and I brought her for Christmas I think in 2018 we brought her to Cuba which isn't anything crazy but we we still took her to Cuba you know um just because we knew we wanted to uh Mm. to at least try to give back some things you know what I mean mean. um even our dad we brought to Ireland for his birthday and he's never been across like he calls it across the pond (laughs) but uh yeah (laughs) it's a very big pond (laughs) exactly um but no I think I think with watching watching my mom like kind of hustle for 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 my brother and I and and becoming so close with with my dad and I don't know I just I have a lot of love for my parents and I think uh I think uh that obviously molds who you are as well like Mm -hmm. I I think when you come from and this is very cliche but when you come from nothing you know not I don't think you know what you want but you know what you don't want yeah Yeah. you know what I mean and that's not that's not a knock to anything that's just when you're raised a certain way you know you want to get out of that way you know what I mean Mm -hmm. and and when you're older you have a lifestyle that that you want for yourself you know what I mean and and I think I'm thankful every day that I had such like such a strong parent Mm-hmm. every day like to, to look up to you know mm-hmm. uh but but again with 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 what i watched growing up and kind of the situations we were in i'm just i'm happy that i'm able to kind of try to go my own way you yeah. know yeah, that's would you say that's like your purpose is that the reason why you get up and keep going like what is what is fueling you to even now like you know you're a busy guy like going back to back to back like what keeps you moving what what gets you up in the morning what yeah why, I, why do you keep doing this i would say that was my start for uh-huh. sure i don't think it's that anymore sure um it definitely was when i was young and i didn't know anything about the world yet and i i just i was motivated from who i wanted to become because of maybe where i came from but i don't think that's what fuels me anymore what honestly fuels me now is I love this city. Like, I actually really love Winnipeg. I think Winnipeg has a bad rap a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of bad in Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of bad everywhere, though. You know what I mean? Um, It's those who choose to see the good and where they're from. And I honestly, like, genuinely, I've been basically everywhere in Canada. 
And like Winnipeg is a great city. It, it really is. And there's a lot of amazing people in Winnipeg. Um, again, there's some bad people, but that's it's everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you, I think, I think my love for this city, my love for doing as much of events that kind of help put Winnipeg on the map. That's, that's one thing. And I know, I know Steven's always been about that too. He's always wanted to put Winnipeg on the map, you know? So I'm, I'm definitely in that, in that route too. I want to put Winnipeg on the map because the people here deserve it because one, the partiers here are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that's, that's like facts. Yeah. There's, there's no denying how, how hard Winnipeg really does party <laughs> just on a week to week basis. Yeah. My friends out in Toronto, Vancouver, everywhere, they like Alberta and Alberta and Ontario love Winnipeg. Yeah. This is a crazy thing. Like they like people that I work with as well as know really well in, in the industry and out of the industry, they love coming here mm -hmm. because they think it's just good vibes, fun, and and they just have a great time. Um, so long as long of an answer as it is, I would say now my like what's driving me is kind of consistently and constantly putting on the craziest events Facts. as well as loving who I'm working with and who I'm doing it for. And I love Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. Man, so. do, you, do you realize the impact that you have on like the younger generations growing up in Winnipeg? Like for us, for example, man, we look up to you as like a man, like, man something that one day we want to achieve, you know, like I heard your name in yeah. tw 2018, we're in grade 12. Yeah. yeah. And we heard your name either. I don't know if it was at OV, but somewhere else, yeah. but that's where we first heard of your name. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Guys. Yeah. I, I don't like talking about my, I really don't like talking about sure. myself like that. Um, because I have people that I've looked up to uh -huh. when I was, when I was, and I, they were like, again, I don't know if I really knew names back in the day, but I knew, I definitely knew Steven mm -hmm. and, uh, and guys like I have, I have specific people that I've always looked up to and that have helped actually like my path. Yeah. And I'm lucky that I've gotten to actually work with so many of these guys and, uh, and just, they've just helped me throughout the way, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so, so I don't know if, if I look at it as I have an impact to, if I, if I do great, I love it, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I hope that if, if somebody wants to get into throwing events and festivals and they see that I'm doing it on a week to week basis and they're going to try it. Amazing. I love that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I ever look at it as if I have an impact on, on people. I'm just, again, doing it for the city as well as doing it for myself too. Cause I love throwing events. Mm -hmm. I love the industry I'm in. Uh, but I think just doing it for Winnipeg as a whole, is 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 what i'm what i'm really trying to do for an impact you know yeah you mentioned uh put the city on the map right yeah. before we have this conversation literally week to week <laughs> like what does it what does putting the city on the map actually mean like yeah how do we how do you how does this city actually get on the map it's on the literal map, obviously, but like on the eh, it's kind of on the map. <laughs> the, the, the social, the social, the social map, the, the, social the impact map, map, yeah. map that like Toronto and Vancouver, L.A., New York. How do we get on that map? Well, you if you this is this is just like factual. You can never as as Winnipeg. Yeah, this is honest facts. You can never be a Toronto. Yeah. Or Toronto so. is an international hub. Yeah. We're never getting to that, and that's just what it is. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. You know what I mean? We're in literally the dat middle of Canada, <laughs> uh, right in the middle with prairies, no <laughs> mountains. Uh, we're, we're unfortunate when it comes to scenery. Nobody's yeah, going to yeah. come here to snowboard. Nobody's going to come <laughs> here to go look at Lake Louise. Cross country. Spring Hill's, yeah. pretty yeah. Spring Hill's pretty steep, man. The come Red on. River, come on, bro. <laughs> And, uh, and nobody's going to fly into here international, you know, yeah. like Toronto right. is a hub no matter what. Yeah. So there's business going in and out of there on a day to day basis. Um, but all we can do from Winnipeg to put it on, I would say map when it comes to like, uh, when it comes to a national level, it depends, it depends the audience that you're trying to reach, right? Sure. Like my audience isn't going to be the same as said audience do you know what i mean mm -hmm. um so i think i think how you put anything on the map is just putting your passion into it and and again that's that's super cliche super broad no matter what um to me putting something on the map it could go to five people or it could go to a hundred thousand people mm -hmm. that doesn't matter as long as you're like passionate about what you do and what you're doing 
whether it's for the city or just whether it's in your lane of expertise of whatever you're doing, of course, we're saying put Winnipeg on the map. So as long as you're putting your passion, energy, and like just motivation constantly into what you want this city to thrive for, to me, that's putting it on the map. Obviously, we have the folk fests. Yeah. We have the summer of sounds yeah. that that from a, from a festival standpoint help. They make you know a dent. I mean? They make yeah. an impact. Uh-huh. Even the super spikes, really, yeah. super spikes, Thanks. an amazing festival for Manitoba. Yeah. You know, um, but but all these these events, we work together to kind of help uh, to kind of help get Winnipeg on said map. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I, w- I would say just in a in a not so literal standpoint. Getting it on the map is just passionately doing what you want Winnipeg to maybe not even be known for, but kind of be thought about when yeah. when when you see it, you know? Max. I mean, to get to where you are today, you obviously had to go through crazy amount of struggles and you've had highs and lows in your career. What are some of the moments that like truly stand out when it comes to the struggle? Like I'm I'm sure COVID was probably one of them but one thing i will say is i don't think i'm at any pinnacle of anything right now i'm just yeah. doing what i like yeah. and i'm lucky that i get to do it with people i like and i'm lucky i get to make a living and a living that allows me to do what i love with my life mm-hmm. um but uh yeah there, there were lo- there was a lot of uh things i'm trying to think of specifics that stand out covid was one thousand percent number yeah. one stance. Those two years were horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, the first little bit was kind of nice because since twenty sixteen, I want to say or twenty twenty sixteen, I was in the cl- no twenty fifteen twenty fifteen. I was in the club almost every every weekend, yeah. so it was nice to get a break. I was like, okay, this is cool. Um, after three months, I was fully over it. Mm-hmm. I think when some we had to cancel Summer of Sound and kind of throughout the summer, I really started like noticing this might be this might be a while you know yeah. i would say by probably last spring not this one 2021 mm-hmm. it really hit me hard I, I was feeling lost and i was i was really upset um i didn't know when it was gonna end i didn't know the industry it who was gonna survive in the industry you know including myself it was I was just, I felt really alone because I'm a very social butterfly. Mm-hmm. I'm out a lot. I know a lot of people, but a lot of, a lot of the people I know is because they go out. Yeah. So it's not like on a personal stance. You know what I mean? Right. We're, we're not texting every day. Hey, how are you? So I felt, I have a lot of really close, I have, I have really, a really solid friend group, but I think COVID kind of took it out of everybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I feel like even even some of my really, really good friends I felt kind of distant from throughout COVID just because we weren't seeing each other as much. Yeah. There wasn't much to do. Mm-hmm. So there was, a, there was a part of in COVID that I, I was really, uh, I, was, I was feeling really down and, and really rough. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it got to me. And, and uh, that is definitely... One one thing that probably stuck out throughout this entire time because I was a, a, a real low and I think I needed that though because I was on a really really big high right before COVID because mm-hmm. I was hitting my stride I was feeling like pretty good and then I, I it just kind of all plummeted and I was I was kind of lost and I didn't know what to do and I think that built a lot of my character uh, I turned it during COVID uh, a good friend of mine Ryan and I we're introduced by a mutual friend. His name's Garrett. He runs a video video company in Winnipeg. Yeah. Um, he wanted to do some donation drives, and I was about it. Mm-hmm. I was in, I was really about it because I wanted to get out of the house and do something good for the community. Um, so we teamed up with Winnipeg Harvest, and we ended up. I think we ended up raising like twenty. I want to say like twenty thousand dollars worth of non perishable food items for Winnipeg Harvest in like oh. four in four weeks of pickups. So that's crazy. Wow, yeah. yeah. And then uh, we teamed up with Salvation Army and we ended up doing over $15,000 worth of donations from like clothes and all that. Uh-huh. Um, and that's Ryan, Ryan Clausen and Garrett McEwen and I, we did that. And then throughout that, Ryan is very close with a, with a dog rescue called Canine Advocates and he brought me on some rescue runs throughout COVID. And uh, then we, during the, during the fires, uh, we went up north and kind of brought water supply to, like, all the bears and, mm-hmm. and the wildlife out there. Mm-hmm. So I think, like, even though I was struggling during COVID, I'm, I'm very blessed and thankful that I was able to find the group that I found 
that wanted to go and help others and mm-hmm. kind of use our time appropriately throughout COVID. It mm-hmm. sucked that we were all locked up, yeah. not able to really do anything and not able to go party every weekend. <laughs> but at the end of the day, there is bigger things that we could try to go out and help with. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not turning a blind eye to that either. Like I understand that I'm pretty lucky. I get to throw parties every week. You know what yeah. I mean? But, uh, yeah, so I would say, I would say this again, I'm a long answer type guy. <laughs> no, so I love feel it. like, we I love feel it. Like perfect we for the like, podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, I feel like I, I, I go down one lane and then it goes into five different. Yeah, lanes, we love it, yeah. <laughs> but I, but I haven't been on one of these for a while, so it's yeah. nice. Um, but, um, yeah, I would say, uh, COVID definitely stands out. Um, my first event definitely yeah. stands out because it didn't go as good as I thought, but it also went amazing, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense, you know? <laughs> was it, like, money-wise, or...? Yeah, no, it didn't make any money. Oh, okay. So, so it didn't make any money, but it was just, I think, the overall experience, I learned what it actually takes to bring in just a... People. Yeah, yeah. like, any... <laughs> and, again, Panic City is amazing DJ, uh-huh. a great producer, um, but but he at the time was was much smaller than what i anticipated i wanted to bring in you know what i mean and just to just the amount of effort and work it took to promote that one little little party oh. it was like crazy in the grand scheme mm. of things it like really opened my eyes to things you know so i would say my first event definitely covid definitely summer of sound definitely my first summer of sound um my first summer of sound for sure um yeah there there's, there's- there's a lot. Yeah, it's of just, course. It's just they're all in my head, you <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but COVID definitely in my first event, definitely. Mm-hmm. I think what we've also, like, just personally speaking, like, learned throughout this journey of just this podcast alone is that there's a lot of, like, ups and downs. 100%. Right? There's moments when everything is awesome and this is the moments we live for. And then there's moments where it's like, this is hard. This is, yeah, you're like, yeah. this is difficult. For sure. Is that the same in in, in your industry and, and the the business world of that? Oh, yeah. And then how do you deal with that? Yeah, of course. Like, specifically in this industry, your goal always is a packed packed club. It sucks when you expect a 1,000 people and there's 50 people in the room. Mm -hmm. But one thing that, and and lucky enough, I haven't haven't felt that in a while. In my early days, I felt that a lot promoting nights. There was one night I expected a 1,000 people, and I'm not even kidding you, there was five people in the room. Five people showed up to this event, and I was, like, heartbroken, devastated. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was only five people that saw how bad that party was. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, you live to fight another day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I kind of use that with everything. And that's one of Steven's favorite sayings, as well as nobody saw how bad it was. <laughs> so um I think in life, no matter what, no matter what area you're in, in business, whatever, what whatever area you are in life, school, wherever you are, you're going to go up, down. Sometimes things are going to feel amazing. Sometimes you're going to be like just at the bottom of your rope and wondering like, how did it, how, how am I even here right now? You know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. But again, there's, there's this one quote that, that I, I really love and it's just, isn't it like a beautiful thing that the sun is shining on your face this morning? And and it's it goes a little di- bit different than that, you know what I mean? But basically, you get up every day, and that's a blessing, you know what I mean? So as long as you can pull yourself up and get up every day, there's kind of a, a way to turn, turn whatever wrong is, is going and, and turn it right, or continue yeah. doing whatever right is going, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think... No matter what, you're going to have downs and ups no matter where you are in life. Whether you make $100 billion or whether you are just out of high school working at McDonald's. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and not, not knowing where, where the heck you're going to go. Um, it's just about picking yourself up every day and trying to be... I won't, I won't even say trying to become successful or trying to be great or like work up, wake up and grind mm-hmm. just wake up try to be a good person and do better than you did the day before and sometimes that isn't going to be better than you did last week it's just doing better than you did the day before and that's how you can cons- consistently yeah. progress you know what i mean yeah. man going from like 
flipping burgers in McDonald's <laughs> and not like knowing. Hey, what I you have a lot do. of friends that are doing some great things. Uh, yeah. that are working at McDonald's. <laughs> Trust me, I've been there. But I, I worked at Cineplex myself. You know, it's not the same kind of job, but their character uh, yeah, building though 100%. for sure. Like I, I loved my time at yeah. McDonald's, and like I, I look back on it and I'm like, it definitely helped me and where I'm doing. It gave me like a good work ethic for, for sure, sure, man. Like and like man, going from that to not where you want to be at the end goal right now, yeah. but you're, you're on the path there. What does that feel like? Yeah, I'm happy for sure. Every day I'm, 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 I look back on that and I kind of, I'm like, how did I even end up doing this when I was working full time at McDonald's? Yeah. It's not even surreal. I would say it's just like kind of crazy sometimes to think like I'm, I'm loving the job that I do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. yeah, we put in, we put in a lot of work. All, all of us that are in this industry put in a lot of work to, to try to make, these events as fun as possible for for the partiers that are going from this city you know mm -hmm. but um yeah it, it, it's definitely a it's definitely a somewhat of a brush of fre fresh air knowing that like i dreaded going in and, and doing this flipping the burger <laughs> in the morning <laughs> and and i i genuinely love what i'm doing now yeah. so yeah. it's more so not not about money not about lifestyle not about anything just like genuinely waking up and and liking what i'm doing is more so what i'm the most happy about because even though I, I really appreciated working at McDonald's and, and I did like it, I liked it at the time and I, I loved who I was working with and stuff. It was still definitely not what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And, and that's nothing against anyone who, who would want to work at McDonald's. Yeah. Um, it's just wasn't what I wanted to do. Yeah. And, uh, being able to wake up and and do what I want to do now, it's definitely a breath of fresh air and refreshing. You're loving it. I'm loving it. <laughs> That's a good one. I like it. <laughs> I prepared that one. Bro. I prepared that one. I was like, yeah. I mean, one thing I also, one thing I want to touch on is, you know, we could talk about the grind, the motivation, but you got to put in the work, right? It comes down to um, having that drive and then proving your worth. Like your tattoo says, you know. You got to put in that work and you're going, especially this summer, because you were talking before the podcast started about how intensely you're going, like summer sound ended and you're going back to back. Yeah. Talk about like the work-life balance and w is there a work-life balance? Is everything work? Is everything life? Is everything? Okay. So th I think this is where a lot of people get it wrong with the promotion and nightclub industry too. Mm -hmm. I love to have fun. Like, I love that fun. I party at most of my events, not the big ones. I don't party at the big ones. But, like, when I'm at La Roca on Saturdays, I'll do shots with people. I'll be buying drinks. I'll, like, I love to have fun. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, business comes first yeah. when it comes to this industry. So if if it doesn't make sense in a business standpoint, you wouldn't, you wouldn't see me going yeah. and having fun all the time. That's where I think some people uh, maybe mix up what the promotion industry kind of is. Um, business always comes first to like all of us that I know that mm -hmm. really run events on a grander scale. Um, so I think back when I was starting off in this, I was very grind. I was very, we, you need to work hard and put in the hours. And obviously that's not always going to make something succeed, but you're going to give yourself a way better shot, yeah. you know? So I was very like, wake up and grind, wake up and do this. We just got to work. I'm a lot different now. I think uh, obviously to succeed, not always, but a lot of the times you're going to have to work hard. Mm -hmm. No matter where you're at, you're going to have to, this podcast, you're going to put hours of editing, hours of filming, mm -hmm. hours of finding your guests. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're going to um, have to put in all that work. But I'm also, like, now I think with, like, being in this industry for so long, I've traveled the world quite a bit. My, m like, my number one passion is traveling. Mm -hmm. um, I think with all of this, like, knowledge that I've just gained from living life um, in a day-to-day -day basis, um, I, I, I'm all for working hard. Like, I think it's much like it's needed mm -hmm. but i also think there's there's a proper balance to where you're not working yourself past limits of enjoying life what is the point of working so hard if all you do is work so i have a lot of friends that are very grind motivated very like we just got, got a grind and all they care about is focusing on their business and that's it mm -hmm. and that's great it is great because you, you're most likely if you're if you're doing well in your business you're going to succeed Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, in, in my in my personal like in my personal life, well, I don't want to work my whole life. 
what's the point of that? I love what I do, yeah. but I want to love the life I live outside right. of what I do. Do mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So if, if, if I can work hard, but also live a life that allows me to do all these things that I want to do, experience these countries I want to travel, have fun with my family, have fun with my friends, go on this camping trip. Why, why wouldn't you do it? You know, to me, I think the grind gets glamorized a bit too much sometimes where there's also a life that you need to enjoy yeah. outside of the grind and outside of doing what, even what I'm trying to do for Winnipeg, there's still life outside of that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I think uh, some, I think you'd be a bit naive to think that some of the most influential, motivated, successful people in the world don't enjoy their own life outside of that. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just like, why wouldn't you like enjoy the fruits of your labor, right? Like you put so much work in and if you're not able to see it through, sort of like what's the point? I'm I'm yeah. I'm I'm one of those people who are like, let's just grind, you know? Yeah. Like we'll I've been it, there too. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll I'm there right now. Even. Yeah, we'll have fun after, right? Like the reason we grind right now is so we can have fun after. That's like my mentality right now. And will it change in the future? I don't know. That's like, a very good mentality though as well. Mm-hmm. You're you're young and starting something new. Facts. Yeah. And you guys you guys have to do that. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. It's like we have the time now. It's like we think of it like, imagine we were 25 when life has other things in it, right? Mm-hmm. Like we have families, you know, you got a girlfriend, whatever. Right now we have the most amount of time to make an impact. Why not just grind it out for those years, you know? So, so I fully agree with that. This is probably where I was at when I was 18, 19, yeah. when I got this on my chest. Yeah. Um, but again, you might not always have that time. So yeah. you always, this is this is also the, the what I've learned like on the on the other part of kind of this this life you know what i mean Mm -hmm. is you might not always have that time Mm -hmm. so if your friends all go on a trip go on that trip with them if you can you know what Mm -hmm. i mean um i'm all for the grind trust (laughs) me i I do believe that you guys have to just put in the work and and like yeah sometimes that's gonna mean you're not going out with your friends you're sitting up editing all night Mm -hmm. that's just what it is yeah but don't get too into the life where you say there will be time down the road because then just like you're saying, then all of a sudden maybe you're 50 and you're like, what did I do with my life? Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm successful in this. Yeah. Where, where did my life go? Mm -hmm. It was just all graduated to this. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think it's just about finding a happy medium. But again, in the early stages of anything, you have to just go after it and, and, and put your head down and just work at it. And I think, uh, like, I'm kind of a hypocrite when I say this because the last set, like from March to now, I've had like no (laughs) life outside of the social life. Yeah. Uh, Like before COVID, I was very like intermediate with my events. I'm like, go, go, go right now. So I haven't left. I actually was in Kelowna Sunday. I got back to, I was there for two days. Um, That was my, my only trip. And like, I travel a lot, so I'm lucky. Yeah. But that was my only trip since March uh of starting events to now i've i've just been go 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 like i'm running i think on average two of my weekends every month have been double event weekends which is like insane Mm -hmm. you know what i mean um it really is insane it is yeah uh so so yeah i'm kind of in that headspace right now where i'm just grinding and working because it's been two years i'm ready to just make make money put on all these events and Mm -hmm. like grind yeah but again there's a happy medium i think i I think what the the caveat or whatever is like if it doesn't work it doesn't work like we don't really lose much right no this is great for you guys like no matter what yeah if it crashes and burn so be it you know we got to talk with great people we got to learn something and something happened i want to go to your events yeah. Because I want to say first though, you guys are doing amazing. Like you guys you. really Much are. Love. You guys, you guys talk <laughs> great, and I just I think you guys have been going. You guys have been pretty consistent with this thing, and yeah. I've been watching from afar. And I think I told you guys this at Summer Sound, and just like keep going. And oh, keep much going love. After it. You guys are killing. Appreciate it. you, bro. Much love. I want to go to your events because I follow you on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> I follow you too. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we got that club, baby. Let's go. We got Quinn Baskin following us. Yeah, I follow a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> You're not that special. <laughs> ouch, ouch, ouch. But the events and just seem so much fun, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and been fun, yeah. and I do know I, I do know there's a lot of work that goes in before and after and planning everything. Yeah, for sure. And talk like let's talk about some of the events and some of the staples that uh, you have, especially right now, right, right? now, for sure. Yeah. What, are, what is, what is something that's upcoming? What is something that's really 
on your mind right now that takes a lot of your time and that you're working towards? Well, the biggest event coming up is obviously we have Steve Aoki at the Cinnaboy yeah. and Downs ah. Friday, September 16th. Uh, Wookie, DLMT, and Flatland Funk as well, as well as we have some local uh, locals coming on that lineup. Um, that's going to be about a 3,000 person event inside the Assiniboine and Downs. Uh, yeah, that one's, that one's definitely the biggest one coming up, and uh-huh. that's in, I guess, three weeks three from weeks, tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and it's wild because I feel like we just wrapped up Summer of Sound, but it was already <laughs> two and a half months ago. Yeah. But uh, Steven, uh, Steven and I are doing that event at the Assiniboine Downs. Um, and then on a week-to-week basis, um, I run La Roca every Saturday, and that's just been a powerhouse all summer. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, I don't think I've ever seen, like, I think everywhere is booming right now, though, in the city. Like, mm-hmm. every venue that is up right now is, is killing it. Um, but, yeah, our Saturday nights up at La Roca have been, like, I've never seen anything like it. I genuinely have never seen anything like it, and I've, I've ran – five or six maybe six or seven weekly events throughout my time i've never i've never seen anything like how la has been every saturday right now we're like wow. it's just crazy right from the get-go we start at 10 we and we're at capacity by 11 15 mm-hmm. that's like, crazy that's 500 people at, yeah at week to week. it's crazy yeah. maybe not by 11 15 but by 11 30 like it's a struggle to just start moving around you know <laughs> what i mean um so, yeah, I'm doing La Roca every Saturday, which has been crazy. I still have Riding Solo, which is my throwback event I've been running this whole time. That's more of a younger demographic. Um, I would say more so like 18 to 24, 25 is the average. Definitely the 18 to 21, 22 is, is the average age for that one. But, it again, it's it's just a powerhouse, that one. That one's been, like, insane since it started in 2018, and I think – the younger demographic just know what Ryan and Solo is. Yeah. I think it just carries weight, and then you get out of that that kind of demographic, and you go on to to the downtowns. The you know, but then the new era of 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 younger the younger demographic just knows what Ryan and Solo is because I think when when you're young, you just hear Ryan and Solo all the time. Yeah. You know, so that's actually tomorrow. I have that tomorrow. Uh, the, what is it today, the 25th? 25th. Yeah, the 26th. That's at Cowboys tomorrow night. And then the next one is going to be Friday, September 30th at Cowboys. And then uh, I work with Winnipeg Wilden, mm-hmm. and we do, uh, we've do. we been doing these Wilden events for the last uh, little bit. We have we started this summer series called Full Send Summer, yeah. and it's just like branded around this, like just a crazy time. Mm-hmm. Hundreds of drinks being lined up and like, a uh, free mechanical bowl and and uh, three dollar shot specials. There's never work or school because it's on a long weekend. It's mm-hmm. a Sunday. It's been a Sunday lately. The last one was crazy. The first one was crazy. This next one is next Sunday, September fourth, and it's we're it's gonna be just crazy. assuming it's <laughs> yeah. gonna be crazy. Um, and that's actually the last one all summer. And we're gonna take a break from those for probably till next summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's gonna be more so like a summer series, yeah. and then. Uh, yeah, I started this this other like uh, event I did in July called Reminisce, and it's just where I kind of pit artists against each other. So I did, uh, I did. Uh, Sounds interesting. Yeah, it was, I, it was Daddy Yankee versus Jay Balvin on the patio, and then I did Beyonce versus Shakira inside, and it's just basically playing like one after the other hit. You know what uh, I mean? Okay. So I'm doing that one October 9th uh, at La Roca again, which is a long weekend on a Sunday. And that's gonna be Drake versus Jack Harlow. Gotta, and you should do it live. I got it. We got an like, idea for you Drake. off camera. Yeah, you got five <laughs> mil. <laughs> I'll do it live. <laughs> we'll we'll give you an idea off camera about this. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Um, and then Nicki Minaj versus Cardi B too. Yeah. We may have some connections with. You. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm, I'm into it. The biggest thing is, I like from these all events. I want to know the business side because it's, without the business, you can't have an event. You know, you got to make money somehow. So it's everything is business. Yeah, right? of course. How do you do it right? That's, again, that's just learning throughout the way. I did it wrong a while, and I didn't realize I was doing it wrong at the time because I was naive in the industry. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize maybe what I could have been making if I knew how to, if I knew what I would have been making at this place or, or what this guy's making here. It's just you learn with time. Again, I'm not, I'm not here to sit and say who's making what or what deals are being made. If you're in the industry, you just move move your way throughout time. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like my first few deals were pretty bad. Mm-hmm. And at the time I thought they were great. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The only way that you learn the business is going through the business. So uh, over time, you'll you'll learn and and you'll you'll see what you should be making, dependent on what event you're running. You know, and uh, but again, from a promotion side, everybody it has to make sense for everybody. Mm -hmm. So the promoter has to be happy. The club and the venue also has to be happy, you know? So if you're not working for both of you, you're actually not really working for anybody because the only way you're going to be happy is if the venue's happy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, So that's why I always think like you have to have a good relationship with the venue you're always working at, or it's probably not, probably not going to work. And I'm lucky. Like I I have a good relationship with most, every venue Mm -hmm. that i work at and have worked at and and i I genuinely enjoy almost everyone that i've worked with and uh and i've I've been lucky that in my week to week uh residencies i've had very close relationships with Mm -hmm. them um but yeah no from a business standpoint you don't know if you're doing it right Mm -hmm. until you just keep going you know Mm -hmm. what i mean and and you'll learn with time and you'll learn your own self self self-value and self-worth and what you what you personally need out of said relationships with each mm-hmm. event you know yeah. um and that only comes with time yeah. and uh, experience yeah. i mean you've met a lot of people you've made a lot of connections yeah. what's like one moment that's like damn i made it like this is me no like, i not made it or like or like i'll never think i made it okay well you look back or like for example you you're <laughs> at summer sound and you're seeing a crowd of ten thousand people just dance into an event that you this put on like th- th- yeah What's that feeling like, and what's an, like a moment like that when you're like, you know, I'm on the right path here. This this, is- this summer sound was special for sure. I uh-huh. uh, I had a lot of out of town friends fly in, and they had the time of their lives. And just this summer sound definitely made me feel a type of way. Mm-hmm. I think the anticipation from the two years yeah. and the build up and just how amazing it went. Um, definitely that that summer sound. When it comes when when it comes to events, La Roca every Saturday really really uh, makes me feel proud and and happy that I get to help put on this for the city because on a week to week like basis for a Saturday night party, it's been really incredible mm-hmm. and I think uh, a lot of people have have really enjoyed it and and have fun every week. So uh, it's not it's not that you think you make it. I think it's just like you're proud that you can help do these type of events that, mm-hmm. that, that for some people, like they might be for real. Like I, 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 I remember when I was 18, 19 whiskey dicks Mondays and union Fridays, that's where I went. Mm-hmm. And I'll always remember that had nothing to do with me promoting it had nothing. Cause I didn't, yeah. it just, that's where I went to party knowing that some people will look at some of your events. Like some people in 20 years from now will be like, you remember La Roca every Saturday? You know what I mean? Um, Summer Sound, I mean, that's always going to be there. Um, it's one of the bigger events in Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. But I think, uh, so So I think, yeah, Summer Sound and, and La Roca right now is really, uh, really hitting, really hitting, hitting me that like we're, it's something special because it really is because uh, on a week to week basis, we're just like smashing it. Yeah. And, and it's something to be proud of. Like, and I'm talking about like everybody there from servers to, yeah. to barbacks to management to ownership to promotion to bartenders. You know what I mean? Like, all mm-hmm. of us are just, like, killing it right now, and I'm, I'm very proud of, like, the whole, like, group. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, yeah, I think from an event standpoint, not that it's not that, like, we made it. It's yeah, just, yeah. like, we get to help You're do proud. this for the city, and we're proud. Mm-hmm. I think, I think yeah, probably La Roca Saturday and definitely, obviously, Summer Sound and – Really looking forward to ending summer off with Steve Aoki. I think that's going to be a special one. But uh, a moment where I'm like, damn. Someone you met. Someone yeah. you like. Maybe not A me. story. I don't really. Personally, <laughs> I, like I used to be about it. I don't really care about meeting meeting people. Um, I, uh, again, this is all business, right? Yeah. So, like, when it, when it comes to Summer Sound, I kind of wish sometimes I would have talked to some people more and, like, and uh, maybe not even talk, but sometimes grab that photo with someone yeah, just because yeah. it's good promo and good, mm-hmm. good for like future years. But again, that's just I used to when I was younger. I used to care about like meeting all these artists so much. Now I don't really care because we're all in the same industry. We're mm-hmm. in different scales, and they're obviously on a way larger, grander scale. But, yeah. but uh, it's not, uh, it's not really who I met. But I'd say probably one of the coolest stories 
was we were in the Middle East. Steven was actually with me. And uh, and uh, Steven's really close with Steve Aoki's manager. Yeah. And I met his manager in L.A., um, years ago, we went for dinner with another mutual friend, a guy named Skeen, um, John Skeen. He was Hollywood hype. He was DJ Hollywood hype back in the day. Okay. Um, we were in LA and, uh, we went for, we went for dinner with Steve Aoki's manager. His name's Dougie. He, he's, um, the best. And, uh, so we were in the Middle East and we were like, what are we doing? Like, we don't know what we want to do tonight. We're, we're like, do we want to go to this show or that show? And then we're walking around the mall and we see a poster and it's Steve Aoki tonight at White Dubai, which is one of the like re- world renowned clubs in the world. It's on like a skyscraper hotel on the rooftop. It's crazy. Jeez. There's a pool. It's like, it's, it's wild. And uh, we were like, well, we got to, Steven's phone was dead. I remember. So I was like, okay, I'm going to call Dougie. So I call him doesn't answer sure enough like an hour later he hits us back calls us back oh sorry he was telling us how he was atving with a persian prince in the, <laughs> in the dubai <laughs> desert with steve <laughs> some crazy <laughs> that we'll never know <laughs> but uh um but but he's like yeah of course I'll, I'll put you guys down and i'm gonna come party with you guys tonight so then uh he he we ended up getting like a seven thousand dollar booth for i think between four of us it was a thousand dollars so it was sick. Jeez. And uh, and then he ended up coming and partying with us all night. We ended up going backstage, partying, and, like, hanging out with Steve after in Dubai for, like, probably an hour. <laughs> and uh, we we got really drunk, all of us. Uh, <laughs> not Steve, but, like, the right. rest of us. And uh, I remember I woke up in the morning, and we had to go to Abu Dhabi to go to the mosque. And... Oh, my head was pounding <laughs> and everyone was still sleeping. And I was like, so confused. I was like, how do we get back here? And then I just have all these photos come in from the night of us <laughs> with Steve. And, like, and, and, and I remember I told Dougie, I was like, man, we have to go to Abu Dhabi. It's like an hour and a half drive. We were taking a cab. We were in the cab and I was like ready to throw up. Cause I was so hungover. And, and, uh, everyone was dying. Me, Steve, my brother, our other friend, uh, we were just all so hungover, and uh, and I remember I I, te- I texted Dougie, and I was like, "Man, we're on our way to Abu Dhabi on the mo- like to this mosque right now. We're an hour and a half drive. I'm dying." And he said, "Buddy, I'm four hours into my flight to L.A." <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, no. so there's levels to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but but uh, that wow. was that was definitely cool, and I think it's full circle because they're both now coming back here September 16th yeah, for this yeah. event. Um, and I think it's going to be nice. Uh, it's going to be fun time. We're all looking forward to it. I know he's also looking forward to it. He's going to stay the weekend in Winnipeg, um, come out and party. Wow. Um, but uh, I think that's definitely probably – there's been, like, smaller DJs that have, like, hooked me up when I've been elsewhere in the world and stuff. But, like, being backstage in Dubai, hanging out with Aoki, getting – a crazy booth for pretty cheap you know and like just all around it was an amazing time and then the next day i had to go skydiving too <laughs> uh, we, we went to the mosque and or no two days after i went skydiving we went to the mosque but then even the next day we we went out and had like a crazy meal in abu dhabi and it was just like i think that whole like 72 hour stretch stretch was just like if it wasn't like partying at at white in dubai uh, with all of them, it was then, man, I was skydiving in Dubai. I've always wanted to skydive in Dubai with like, with the palm in the background. And yeah. like, and then we were, we were sleeping in Wadi Rum in Jordan that trip. And like in the middle of the desert, I remember we were going, we met another group and we went, uh, eight, not ATV. And we went in the back of Jeeps, these party Jeeps, and they were just drifting Thank through you. the, through the desert with us. And then they brought us to the, this Syrian border, like not, to this year, sure. but like buy it. And we just put, we put a, a blanket down and they made us bed on tea and we just told stories and looked up at the stars. And it's just like, I, uh, sometimes like I'm, I'm just like blown away that I get to do these things in life. And like anybody can do these things. It's just being lucky enough to make the means to do so, but also doing it yeah. you know what i mean like actually putting yourself out in the world and flying to these unknown places you know i think more so like i just hit my 30th country that i've been to in Jeez. february and and i think like my number one thing is i'm going to see the world have you I'm been actually to india? doing it 
I'm going to India. I'm going to India Where early next year. Let's, go. Plan some. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> Let's go to <laughs> India. I've, I've always wanted to go. And, and it's funny, my two friends that have been to like 58 countries, uh-huh. they, uh, they tell me because they know I like love the world. Yeah. They say India is, uh, India is truly where you see how different the world is yeah, in other parts of the world. You know? And, uh, and if you, if you, if you love like culture and you love to experience the world, then India is where you're right. really going to be culture shocked and be like, wowed because mm-hmm. they've been, and, and they loved it. They had the yeah. best time. They're Indian as well, <laughs> yeah. but, 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 uh, but yeah, no, uh, I'm, I'm going to India early next year. Awesome. What, what's what's your top place? Like, do you have a top place? You've been to thirty countries. Yeah. Well, Jeez, my goal bro. is like seventy five, eighty. How many? Yeah, and that might be hard. You know. Yeah. What I mean? How many countries in the world? Two or four? No, no it's like one ninety. Yeah, one ninety something. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> two. <laughs> what a coincidence. No, it's, not two, it's not two or four. It's not two or four. Yeah, yeah. I wish it was. Yeah. So it'd be so good for branding. <laughs> it would be so good. My favorite place. It's hard, right? I, my best trip I've ever. My favorite trip I've ever been on. The best time I've had was Dubai and Jordan. I know people who hate Dubai. Yeah, because they think it was just overhyped and over. You know, I had the best time ever in Dubai and Jordan. Probably my favorite trip. My favorite country. I've been to Italy twice, and I've always loved it. Mm-hmm. The coast of Italy and Tuscany. Like, yeah, Italy's. I would I would say Italy is when I've been to all the countries like I like to go to the most random places to say I've been you know and I also like to go to like where everybody wants to go to but I think Italy's the place when I've been to where I can when I can finally say okay I've been to enough places I want to go to like a consistent spot now every summer uh-huh. I'll go to Italy yeah. um but uh yeah like there's there's a lot of do you like spin places. a globe and just like point sometimes really? so like yeah <laughs> When we closed for COVID this time, I said to myself, when we opened last time, the first time, I said, if we ever close again, I'm just taking a one way. <laughs> so it happened. And my friends were like, you aren't going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they literally said, you're not going to do it when we close. And I said, watch. <laughs> and uh, my birthday is in January. So I had a little, a little like dinner with friends. And then I left the next day. And they were <laughs> like, I can't believe you're doing it. And I, I brought my dog to my mom's in Edmonton, and I flew out of Edmonton, and I took a one way to Paris, and then I went to my brother ended up meeting me for a lot of this trip too, but I took a one way to Paris, I, I did uh, I did Paris for a couple of days, then I went to the south of France, saw some friends, went to Monaco, then I went to uh, Switzerland, Austria, Hungary. This was all like one trip. This trip is wild. I ended up getting a special visa to enter Russia. And <laughs> those are like pretty difficult to yeah, obtain. Yeah. But I had a friend who is dating a pro hockey player out there. So she connected me with like a guy that could help me get a, the visa. I ended up going. I went into Moscow, spent like a week. And then this, the whole war was starting. And, and America got on like Biden went on and said, kind of if you're from North America, get out within the next two days. I ended up flying from Moscow to Argentina. I flew 15 hours. Yeah, that's far. Yeah, it's crazy (laughs) far. And then I met my brother and my other friend and a bunch of other friends out there. My one friend was uh, out there for a few months or a few weeks or something. I think a couple months. And then there was like a group of us. Met him in Buenos Aires. We did Argentina. We did Buenos Aires and then went to Mendoza, which is like the wine country. And then went to Chile and then flew home. So I did, like, Europe and South America. I finished off really South America because I've been wow. to, like, I think I've been to 13 countries in Europe. And now I've been to, like, most of South America wow. and a good chunk of Central America. So now I need to, like, really start going Asia because I've only been to two countries. Well, I've only been to Philippines and Thailand. Uh-huh. But I really got to start conquering Asia. I really need to go to the Middle East. Conquering, I yeah, love yeah. <laughs> I, love <that. laughs> I love the word, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it's more so like crazy stuff now. Like I wanna, I wanna go to the places you probably shouldn't go. Like even Russia, when I went, it North was Korea. like really weird. North and like Korea. yeah, I, well, I, I have plans to go there. Damn. So the goal is next year, but it depends on border openings and it depends on the place that I'm trying to get the visa from. Uh-huh. But, like, now it's just, like, getting through, like, places where, like, you say you've been and people are just, like, you've been there, you Antarctica. know? Antarctica. I really want to go to Antarctica. 
Yeah. You know, you get on to get to Antarctica. You got to go to South America yeah, or, or you have, South. You have to go to Argentina. Uh-huh. It's, a, it's a tiny t- town called like, I wish I don't know how to say sure, it sure. really properly, but you fly there. And then from there you can charter onto the, there's like, only the like 10 boat. people in Antarctica or like, it's very yeah, small. You don't even get off. I don't yeah. think you just like charter the, oh, the okay, boat. Okay, okay. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I wouldn't know. But yeah. <laughs> Traveling is literally yeah. like probably my most passionate yeah. parties and travel are like the two things I really, really love. It's a perfect Perfect lifestyle. You got to swing yeah. by New Zealand. I'm from New Zealand. I lived there eight years. Of my really? Life. Yeah. When, when did you move here? Uh, when I was 10 years old. So you lived there from what? From one to nine. So you weren't born in New Zealand? No, I was born in India. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But New Zealand's a vibe. It's a vibe. Yeah. I, I, one of my friends lives out there. I need to definitely get to New Zealand and Australia. Yeah. yeah. It's a vibe. I definitely, they're, What's the flight from New Zealand to Australia, you know? He's going to uh, book it right now, Australia. bro. <laughs> like, between there? That's yeah. short. That's is short. It, is it really short, though? I didn't know uh, if it was like a four-hour flight or like an hour flight. No, I think I think it's I think it's like two, three hours. Yeah. Yeah. Here to here to New Zealand's a while. <laughs> to cross the globe. <laughs> 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 It'll be a quick 10 minutes. No, that's like, yeah, that, that that's 14 hours. <laughs> that one takes a while. <laughs> man, from everything you've experienced in your life, man, is there any advice you can give to the people out there? Hey man, I'm still young. I'm, st- I'm still learning. I'm still living. Uh, I think you guys asked me this we at did. Summer of Sound. Yeah, we so end. I'll, we end. On this yeah, so I'll try to. I'll try to switch up. Switch up <laughs> the answer. Uh, I would say, do what you're passionate about. Do what drives you every morning. If you wake up and you're happy with what you're doing and you're happy with who you're becoming, then you're doing something right. Um, Literally, that's that's probably the number one goal to living a happy and successful, a personally successful life is being happy with what you're doing every day and who you're becoming while doing that. So that's probably what I have to say. Damn. Love. On that note, I think this is the perfect way to end off the podcast. If you haven't already, make sure to check out uh, Quinn. We'll tag everything in the description below. Make sure to buy some tickets for September 16th with Stevie Aoki. Tag the, that in the description below as well. Oh, Hit them up. Appreciate you boys. Yeah, man. <laughs> and uh, we're live on all streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all of that, and live every Tuesday morning at 11.30 a.m. on the FM radio station. One on one. Until next time. Peace. I'm sorry Peace. I chatted you guys year off. No, no, no. no, no, no. It's good. Love it, yo. Okay, thank it. you guys. That's, That's a wrap. wrap.